Hello everybody and welcome back to Ars Trains. My name's Cory and in today's video, I won't keep you here for long, but I was a guest on Sam Ogage Trains podcast the other day. So he's starting out a new podcast, which I hope you guys enjoy, where he will have a few people on each podcast and they all talk about model trains and stuff like that. Mostly Ogage, I'm pretty sure it's all going to be like O scale and stuff like that in the future, but I got the honor and privilege to be on his first podcast and also with me was RJ's Trains. So the three of us all together, we talk about a lot of cool train stuff. I hope you guys are going to enjoy, like, you know, our first trains, what got us into the hobby, why we like it, stuff we're a part of, and what's our pivotal point, like, a bunch of cool stuff. But you're going to notice we have three segments, but in this video, there's only two segments. And the reason why is I want you guys to go check out segment three. So once you're done watching my video, and if you do like it, please go watch their own renditions of their podcast. Sam has the complete unedited version of the podcast with every single bit in it. Then RJ, I believe, will be posting his version shortly. So again, this video only has segments one and two. So if you want to see segment three, please go check them out and subscribe to them too if you haven't already. They both make really nice cool train content anyways let's get to it sam's trains and welcome to my first ever podcast i'm here with rj and Corey. how are you guys doing today hey i'm doing fine thank you for having me That's all right so it's my first ever podcast um i just kind of got these guys together and we're going to talk about some trains today like the purpose for this podcast is to um, help promote and inspire and share our wonderful hobby um and my goals um i hope to record the history of our wonderful hobby and share um our stories together um and possibly inspire those who aren't sure or um are looking for some help along the way um recording the podcast makes it possible to share stories of others and help to grow the community. So I thought you guys were the perfect candidates for the first try. Um, mm -hmm. So, all right, we're just gonna start off with some introductions real quick. Um, I do have some questions to go along with the topics of, or the, um, the subject of introduction. So um, when did the hobby first spark your interest and why? So for me, when I was little, you know, I was gotten to Thomas the Tank Engine. And then one day I received an I Love Toy Train VHS tape. Next thing you know, I was watching, you know, wonderful layouts with post-war Lionel. And the next thing you know, I was asking my parents for a Super Chief set. And from there, I got a MTH ready to run Super Chief set. And then next thing you know, 15 years later, here I am. I had a similar experience as well with Thomas the Train and, you know, kind of starting to, um, get the I Love Toy Trains DVDs and you know, it just stuck with me. All right, Corey, go ahead. So, so yeah, just like you guys, I started off with Thomas. So I, do you guys remember the Thomas Wooden Railway stuff? Uh, I yes, have like- I still have a bunch oh, yeah. of that, yeah. So I used to watch TV and I had that too, but that, that didn't really stick with me because like every kid like in my generation watched Thomas growing up. But what really kind of did it in for me was my grandfather's Lionel layout. So like, you know, I'd go to the, I'd go to his house every Sunday and we'd always play with this train. And his, his layout was huge back in the day. I can't think of the size, but I think seeing his Lionel trains definitely are like what got me into the hobby. I'm like, wow, look at these model trains. It's like the coolest thing ever, seeing them run around. So I think that's really what kind of got me in, I guess. But then like, you know, as I aged on, I kind of got out of the hobby when I was about six or seven. So like, you know, I got into so many other things like Star Wars, like all the other like type of stuff kids go through. But probably 2017, we unboxed his Lionel from the attic because we were moving to a different space. I'm like, oh yeah. Yeah, I remember these things. So yeah, yeah. I put them out on the floor, and then a year later, we this is like a new part of my basement. This wasn't here before. I'm like, oh, let's build a little train layout. What's the worst that can happen? So uh, while we were building the layout, I put my fast track on the floor, and I decided, oh, let me record my trains with my phone, and boom, that's the birth of ours trains. And that's really what got me going in because I'm like, wow, video making is so much fun. So yeah, that's pretty much what got me into trains. Yeah, that's awesome. Those are some awesome stories there. I was captivated by, you know, the the DVDs and the movies and TV shows with uh, I Love Toy Trains and Thomas. Um, it always continued to stuck with me. And then, you know, I kind of reached away from it a little bit. And then I was, you know, kind of going back and looking at those memories. And I was like, oh, I remember this. I kind of want my first train set. And so I started saving up money and um, I ended up getting the Hogwarts Express train set. And then that was like, okay, we're, we're set, we're ready to go. So I guess that leads us into our next question. You know, our, your first train set, um, why did you pick that particular set? You know what I mean? So for me, I distinctly remember watching 
the I Love Toy Trains, and they showed the Lionel post-war uh, war bonnet Santa Fe F units. And I mean, they, they go into like how beautiful the paint scheme is in the videos, but just just the image of the F unit just st stuck in my mind. I would watch the one scene where they would show it over and over again. And then like I tell my parents for Christmas that year, Santa dropped off the MTH version of it because Lionel wasn't making it at the time. And I, I probably ran that. Fortunately, it doesn't work anymore, but that's because I ran the thing into the ground. I probably yeah, played so with much. it yeah, yeah, every yeah. day for three years straight. But it was a nice little PS2 locomotive with the uh, all the passenger sound effects. It was an amazing set. Yeah, that's that's awesome. Yeah, I've always wanted the, uh, the Santa Fe's F units, um, especially the post-war ones. Those are really cool. Yeah. But I have yet to acquire those, but it's totally okay. I'm grateful for what I have. All right, Corey, go ahead. So then my first train, I guess you can call that, well, yeah, it's a train set. So my first train set was, I believe when I was five years old, I think it was either for my birthday or for Christmas, my grandfather gave me this guy, which is the uh, 1976 Lionel MPC era Empire State Express set. So this was only produced for one year. So like, you know, you have your uh, Hudson 8600, you got a... Uh, Great Northern box car, New York Central cattle car, a Sunoco single dome tanker car, a Southern grain or not grain car, a hopper, and then a New York Central bay window caboose. And I mean, it doesn't have many features. It's just a classic old Lionel set, and it has the uh, sound of steam tender, and it has the uh, three position E in it. But when I got this thing as a little kid, I lit up because I always, I, I still, I always love steam over diesel, and I loved anything that had moving parts. So especially once I saw these drivers moving and going, all that stuff, that just captivated me. I think that this is probably one of my favorite sets that is like, it's never let me down that I lost this locomotive five years ago. And out of all places, it was with garden tools in a plastic bin. And I was like, okay, it's not gonna work. It's fried, it's totally dead. And I put it on the track and it moved like magic. Like it's been out of his box for so long and I put it on the tracks and it worked like so perfectly. It wasn't still at all, everything turned over and it's still, I haven't even touched it up much. All I did was grease it a bit and like replace one or two parts and it still works like magic. So that was my first train set. That's that's awesome, yeah. I, am def I definitely think the post-war and the MPC era tooling seems to be the most durable. Um, mm -hmm. People are like, see them at like for example for rj you just recently went to antique stores right and you bought a bunch of the post-war stuff and it's like beautiful right it's still in work great working condition yeah so i picked up a uh, lionel 2025 which is lionel's post-war rendition of the k4 and 1947 now the original owner did some cosmetic work to it placed it right down on the track to test it work the day the day i got it the, the day it was day. new off the factory it's you wouldn't expect that from a uh, newer lionel locomotive after all these years place it on the track and it works like the day it was built yeah it's it's really incredible all right so that's kind of like our introduction you know um one last question before we move on to our next topic what was the pivotal moment where you were like this is my hobby this is this is what I'm going to stick with. My pivotal point is what got me the hobby. It was like definitely starting my YouTube channel, Arch Trains, because before that, like I said, I didn't have much interest in trains. But once I started the channel and started seeing that people watch with things like, well, OK, cool. I guess I'll post more about train stuff. I don't know anything about it. But then once my audience kind of like right now, it's like fantastic. I have so many new people that are watching my videos and it's really such a uh, such a great drive. Uh, because I want to become a uh, movie producer, or not a movie producer, a, a director, a uh, film producer, stuff like that when I grow up. Uh, filming model trains and stuff like that is really what kind of what keeps me going. And then once I, after my Amherst video this year was 2020, once I took my long break and started re like, just, I'd like, okay, let's try Lionel videos again. So I put out a Lionel train video and that got so many views. And I'm like, wait. I tried that before and that literally got nothing. You tell me people like it now. So I'm like, okay, I'll put on another one. That one got even more views. So I'm like, okay, cool. I guess people really like Lionel trains. So I think that's what said my pivotal point that trains are my hobby because people enjoy what I do and that I have so much fun making this stuff. I love trains and stuff. I love, like, you know, learn about the history of these things, love watching them run. So I think that was my pivotal point in saying, this is my hobby. I'm, not, I'm never gonna leave it now. I'm gonna find yeah, yeah. trains. Yeah, I got it. So 
I think that's my that's my answer to that. I definitely your editing in your videos is um, very. <laughs> Thank you. I, I would say pretty advanced for most. Um, yeah, I, I I take I take tips watching your videos on uh, different uh -huh. new editing yeah. points I can do. Yeah. Um, I just recently got iMovie on the Mac, so okay, I'm now able go. to go yeah. and get a creative <laughs> outlet. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yep, but yeah, okay. RJ, you're up. Uh, I guess for me, uh, I was pretty young when my dad and I, we were building like my first permanent layout. Uh, just that shared experience of you know building it. And then from there on being able to learn like the carpentry skills, the wiring skills and how it makes you like an all around handyman. That's just not, you know, running trains. Um, I was just really captivated by it, you know, more than video games because it was something that I could do, figure out how things worked. And I've, I've taken breaks here and there from the hobby, just something else piques my interest at the time, but I've consistently stayed and bought model trains for a long time now. That's very exciting. Yeah, I would say, you know, kind of like with the handyman thing, it's like I learned how to wire and I learned a little bit about electricity, a little bit like, you know, trying to restore these and take them apart and stuff like that. Kind of learned a little bit of those skills that, are, that I think might, might be important. That's why I like model trains so much more than like, uh, I guess, video or like, I like games and stuff like that. Don't get me wrong, but I feel like model trains are so much more fun because it teaches you so many things. Like you said, it teaches you how to wire. You can, t like you can do scenery and that stuff. Uh, learn, like you can learn to talk to other people who like the hobby. It's a great yeah. social life. So I'm doing and it right the, now, the podcast right now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the thing also is that like, you know, when you buy things in video games, like once that video game, I guess, goes irrelevant or something, that's never, that's something you're never gonna get your money back versus buying something physical like these, you're gonna have them around for like, as long as you want them to. So like these guys, I don't plan to get rid of for a very long time. And it's a great investment too, because again, they always work. So like, I don't know, like I can't predict the future, but like if the PlayStation 4 goes out one day and all that money I spent on Minecraft or whatever, that's long gone, I'm never getting that back. But for this, it's always gonna be with me and I can always I can always share it too. I can, bring, I can take these to train shows, I can take these to friends' houses. So that's why I prefer, I guess, model trains over, I guess, video games and stuff like that. Like with the hobby and stuff, you know, it's interactive, you can do your, you can literally do whatever you want um, as long as, you know, you have the money to pay for it. I guess and for video games you know you can only go so far that's why I'm kind of like doing this podcast because I feel like a lot of the youth um, mm -hmm. kind of leans towards podcasts and that's the other fun thing about model trains is that you can create your own environment that's kind of off the scenery thing though but you can model whatever you want I've seen people do like space trains type of thing or wild west North America I've seen people all over the world just nearby there's a guy I can't remember what house he's in but he has a huge like uh German-based model railroad, which is super cool. So it has all so the- cool. It's so detailed, I just can't, it blows my mind. I know, it's stuff so cool. So that's why, again, another reason I love model trains because you can create your own environment. You can add figures or stuff, you can add cars, you can add buildings, you can have your own environment, I guess, really. So that's another reason I love it. Anything you want to add, RJ, before we move on? Yeah, no, just building your own little world. I mean, on my layout, I repainted, you know, an old Lionel station to look like the station that's in my own my own hometown you know it's it's little stuff like that where you, you know if somebody comes and visits your layout you can say oh wait that's something you actually see in real life and you're you're be you're able to create your own little world and just being able to put your head down at track level and see the trains go by as if you were a rail fan on your own layout I, it's it's those little things about you know the model railroading hobby as a whole that makes it so much enjoyment out of it, especially putting so much work into it. Yeah, and um, when I was, so I had an older layout, but it had basically no scenery at all. It was just a grass mat with some loops of track and stuff like that. And so I redid it and everything like that. And so I decided, well, I recently came back from a trip to South Dakota and there's nothing out there, but we were in the Black Hills era and it was it was beautiful. I mean, it, it was mind blowing. And I was like, I'm gonna model my, my, my train table like that. So my big mountain on my layout, if you see in some of the videos and stuff like that, it's 
I tried to do my best to make it look like the Black Hills. Yeah, that's super Dakota. cool. I love when people model stuff off of, like what, what RJ was saying with his uh, own station. I love when people model things after real life or places they have connections with. So like a few elderly men, when I go to their layout, they always have their stores and stuff named with places that were significant in their lives. Like, you know, Ma and Pa stores or stores their parents own or maybe uh, stores they used to go to as kids or stores they actually worked at. So I love when people do that or be like, oh, Here's this car. It doesn't look important, but this was actually my first car, and I parked yeah. it in front of it. I love when it, people do that. It's kind of like a, a time capsule for that specific person, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Next questions. Um, for somebody who wants to get more involved, I guess, in the community, I guess, um, I chose YouTube to do that um, because there's not many train clubs around me. What was the first step you took to get involved on a larger scale? Um, whether that's train shows, community events, YouTube, um, and if you are currently involved in something, why are you? I first created my YouTube account. I was in middle school, so it's been like six, seven years now. Wow. And it didn't get that many views and that many subscribers. I actually took down all those videos because I can do much better editing nowadays. That was my first like putting myself out there in the community. And shortly after I did the whole YouTube thing, I found the OGR forum, which I'm still part of today and if you guys don't know what the OGR forum is it's basically everybody that's in O-Gage for railroading they get to post pictures of their layouts you know what they're buying you know what they're doing to their layout and uh, it's just thousands of people from across the country putting their own input into the the hobby and discussing it and you can get a lot of valuable information from it so I'll post on there and read what other people are doing and try to take those tips and use it on my layout. And then I recently restarted my YouTube channel, you know, RJ's Trains, and it's been uh, taking off a little bit lately. And always, and now here I am on the podcast. Um, hopefully this podcast will be a success um, so we can share our wonderful stories together and collaborate together. Um, that was one of the reasons why I chose to do the podcast. Alrighty, so this one, again, how I got started in the hobby for this was my YouTube channel because before that, I used to go to the Amherst train show a lot, which is in Massachusetts each year. I'm not sure if you guys have heard of that. And I always do videos on it, but I kept going there. So that's kind of what kept me up. And like I said, I uh, did film my grandfather's trains on the floor and I had a lot of fun with that. I didn't know anybody in the train community. I didn't know anything, but with YouTube going along, I was finding more places. I'm like, alrighty, uh, there's this club down the road. I'll see if they can let me do a video with that. And now like, you know, it's growing more and more. So I'm a part of a lot of clubs today. Um, I'm part of the uh, NMRA, which is the uh, National Model Railroaders Association, the Hudson Berkshire Division, which is a uh, model railroading club where we all meet together and like, you know, share different, like, uh, what do you call them, workshops and stuff like that. So like, oh, how to weather, how to do scenery, wiring, then we'll visit other, people, other people's layouts and then like, you know, we'll go to conventions and stuff like that. Um, another club I'm a part of is Adirondack Live Steamers. So you guys know, I'm, I imagine you guys know what Live Steam is. That's the little trains you can ride around. I'm a part of one of those clubs and they're in the Adirondacks. So like, you know, you got all the trees and you got lots of hills. So this place is so cool because not too long ago, I went, I was in a, it was in an open house in October, I believe. They had an, like, they had an open house and we got invited to go there. I'm like, okay, cool. I've never heard of live steam before. And then the, I went there and there was trains going by like every 10 seconds. It was so cool. There was actual like live working steam engines, like scaled down. There was like all these eerie Lackawanna F units. There was all these switchers and then carry the little cars with people on them. I just, I had probably one of the best days of my life there because I'd never felt more happy seeing all these little trains go by and I had my camera with me too. So I'm like, already I can make an R's Trains up video off this. So I did put that video out and then the club guys noticed it and they're like, yo, that video is super cool. Do you want to be a part of the club? And I'm like, hey, absolutely. So that's how I joined their club. And unfortunately do the uh, stay at home right now. We were supposed to be having our spring meet coming soon. So that's when people all over the country, like, you know, on the East Coast and some from uh, over the world, there's a guy from the UK who comes each year would come to the spring meet bring their trains and we'd run their trains all around so i was looking forward to that but unfortunately it got canceled so hopefully it's not going on for much longer so we can get to 
more work on another club I'm trying to join right now is the uh, the Catholic Region Model Railroad Club. I didn't know about these guys. I know that they had their layouts at local train shows. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's cool. But there's uh, in Mechanicville, New York, which is a place where I'm nearby, there's an old Delaware and Hudson um, switch tower called the XO Tower. And the town was redoing that. And in the upper part of the tower, like, you know, where all the switches used to be, and like, you know, you had the lookout, they're a they're putting a module layout up there now ho and i'm like whoa i gotta find out who owns that it's like permanent too like they're not gonna be able to well they'll take it apart eventually someday but for it's gonna be permanent it's gonna be based off the scenery nearby new york I'm like already i gotta find out who owns that layout so i gotta join so right now my membership's pending but i'm friends with a lot of the guys there so i'm pretty confident i'll hopefully be able to join and help do uh finish that layout and stuff like that so yeah those are the parts i'm those are the clubs I'm a part of. Awesome. Yeah, that seems like um, some very interesting um, clubs. It seems like a lot of the stuff, um, like the train shows and the clubs, is a lot of up east um, where I live in the Midwest region. It's, I mean, there's not much. Um, probably the closest thing probably to me would be Nickel Plate Road and Fort, is it Fort Wayne? Fort Wayne Historical Society owns 765. Okay. I think that would probably be the closest thing. Other than that, I mean, it's kind of hard. So that's why I'm trying to do it um, technology with technology um, until I can, you know, I'm a little bit more free and stuff like that. So awesome. Um, so I'm our last- I hope you guys enjoyed that video. It was, it was a lot of fun talking to those two guys. Was, I had a very good time, fun, nice knowing each other. We talked a little after a bit, got to know each other a little better. But yeah, they're two super cool dudes. I hope you guys can please go check out their channels. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go check them out, subscribe to them, and watch the part three of the podcast if you want to do that. Anyways, yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you guys the next one. So stay tuned. Bye-bye. Thank you.